Hey there friends, I hope you're doing well and getting some paint on your minis. For today's video, I'm going to take the Space Marine Captain from the new Warhammer 40k Leviathan box and convert it up so it looks like it's part of the Dark Angels chapter. So to start, I sculpted a little hood and a couple extra purity seals. I'm not much of a sculptor, but I think these turned out okay and it's pretty easy to do. The next thing to do was to clip off his nasty little iron halo so I could replace it with some proper Dark Angel wings. And of course, got to sand down that area. Ooh, that's looking right and proper. Next, I decided to replace his sword with one from the Dark Angel's Terminator kit. And because of the angle of the wrist, it will change his pose, so he's kind of swinging it from behind him. So to attach the sword, I just used a little blob of green stuff. Again, I'm not much of a sculptor, but I just pushed it on there and sanded it down a bit after this. And with some paint, it looked good enough. Don't forget to drill your barrels. People on the internet will yell at you. After staring at this for a while, I realized that the purity seals look like nipple tassels. I'm gonna have to remove one of those. <laughs> In its place, I decided to add a couple of sheathed uh, daggers that I found in my bits, and I thought that looked a lot better. No more nipple tassels for you, Mr. Captain. So at this point, I thought he looked Dark Angels-y enough, so I primed him in black and gave him a Zenithal from above. I always like to work with a Zenithal primed model, just because it's so much easier to see those details. Not too bad. So first up is some nice dark green to get that classic Dark Angels look. I just took my time, went nice and thin. If you make a mess, it's no big deal. You're gonna go over all this stuff later. So I thought I looked pretty good. Next, I took that same color and added a lighter green to it just to get my first level of highlights. So I just kind of lightly laid that over and I think I got some pretty good results. Once the initial highlights were looking pretty good, I took a much lighter green and I just went around and highlighted all the edges of his armor. Remember, it's much easier to highlight edges if you're using the side of your brush instead of the tip. At this point, I decided to move on and paint his cape a classic ivory color. All the Dark Angels tend to have this nice ivory on their cloth materials. Uh, I was getting kind of annoyed at painting around this base, so I just ripped it right off the base, put it on some cork, and I could get into those undersides. So I took a brighter ivory color, and that's my first level of highlights on the cape. Just remember when working with these brighter colors, work in thin layers, building it up slowly, and it'll look great. Lastly, I took some pure white and just put that on the sharpest of edges just to make it really pop. Old Titanium White by Pro Acryl is amazing. Check it out. Next, I grabbed a nice deep red and started picking out those ornamental wings and purity seals on his armor. Now we highlight the red things. I then took that highlight and added a much lighter red to it to get my second highlight and I dry brushed it on. Remember to wipe off a lot of the paint using a non-porous palette so that your paint doesn't come off looking too chalky. I then took a nice medium gray and started painting in all the bone-ish looking pieces on his armor. I didn't want to get it too close to white because we already have a lot of white on him with all the cloth materials, so just kind of keeping it more gray. So here I'm just taking another highlight, dry brushing it on, and then I'm going to take that highlight again and add some white to it just for my final brush on there, staying very light to keep it away from that pure white. 
So I decided to take some gold and pick out some of the more interesting details on his armor, including the Aquila on his chest. Next, I added some silver to that gold and just kind of lightly brushed that on the edges to give it a subtle highlight. So for the next step, I took some black and just painted up his Storm Bolter that color. And once that was done, I took a nice medium gray and brushed that on to the edges to pick out some highlights. And lastly, once that was complete, I added some white to that gray to get a lighter color and just brushed that over the edges lightly. Next, I took a nice dark brown and painted some of the more natural looking materials like the handle on his sword and the sheaths on the daggers on his chest. Then I took a lighter brown and just did some light highlights on those. So next I wanted to paint up his power sword and I painted it this dark blue but I decided it wasn't really a good place to start from so I picked out this nice medium blue and painted up the sword with that to be my mid-tone. With the mid-tone in place, I grabbed a nice bright blue to be my highlight and painted half the blade on the tip on the one side and then the opposite on the other side. And then I reversed that on the back side of the blade. I then took that original mid-tone and started lightly glazing it over the edges of the highlight. This took maybe six to 10 coats until I blended that highlight into the blade. Uh, this takes a long time, just wait for your coats to dry before going for another coat. Uh, but as long as your paint's thin enough, this will look nice. And then you should get a result, something like this. I then took a blue that was much darker than the mid-tone and applied that on the blade as a shadow, just like I did with the highlight, but on the opposite side of the blade. It, again, it took a bunch of layering to blend in, but it looked pretty nice. I then took a brighter color and added it to my highlight and a darker color and added it to my shadow. And I just mixed those together and applied them fairly sparingly, um, blending them into those shadow and highlight colors uh, in order to just add some additional transition into darker and lighter colors there. So as a final touch, I took some pure white and just carefully added it to the edges of the blade to make it pop. And it was looking pretty decent, but I wasn't quite happy with the color. So I took a much more saturated blue and just glazed that over top. And once that was in place, I think we were looking pretty good. I decided it was time to add some character to this guy. So here's some flesh tones. With the shadows and mintones in place, I added some ivory to the midtone and finished up the highlights on his face. He's ugly, but he's mine. Moving on, I picked out a really dark silver and started picking out any metals. Then with a brighter silver, you got it, highlights. At this point, I decided the model needed some more shading, so I took some Agrax Earthshade and went around and hit most of the mid-tone-like colors with that, sparingly, and it looked pretty good. And then I took some Nuln Oil and hit the darker colors with that. Reichlin Flesh Shade is basically skin shading in a bottle. So I applied some of that to his face and it started to look a lot better. Apothecary White is technically a contrast paint, but it is amazing for just doing some light shading on lighter colors like this. Uh, try it out if you haven't. It's pretty awesome. It's my go-to for sure. 
time to do some scribbling. I took some black paint and just lightly etched it over the purity seals to make it look like there's some writing on them. Just make sure your paint's really thin when you do this. I'm no professional, but this is good enough in my books. So I took some more of that black and some of the red mid-tone I used earlier and just decided to freehand some checker pattern on that little ornamental thing on his chest. Just thought it looked kind of nice. So I then took some black and some ivory and painted up his eyes. I generally do a black blob filling the whole eye socket and then white and then black again for the pupil. As a last touch, I just wanted to add something to his right shoulder pad, so I looked to my Dark Angels transfer sheet and found a lieutenant icon. So I just put that in some water and removed it from the paper and just laid it over his shoulder and smoothed it out best I could. In preparation for my next step, I took some gloss varnish and mixed it with some thinner in my airbrush and just sprayed it all over the model. It also helps to lock in that transfer I just put on his shoulder. So I've never used Tamiya panel line before, so I figured this is a good opportunity to give that a shot. So the gloss varnish allows this enamel panel liner to just kind of flow into the creases, which is just gonna really pump up the shadows. And if you make any mistakes, you can just clean it up with some paint thinner or like white spirits. Pretty nice, I like it. All that was left was to do the base. So I took a black and a dark gray and a lighter one and a bright gray and just went over the whole base to give it this gradient uh, building up from a really dark color to a fairly light one on the edges here. Pretty much just dry brushing the whole time. This is gonna be used um, for some glazing effects later to get some shading. So here I'm using a dark orange and later mixing it with a light yellow uh, to create this kind of um, alien world looking base. Here I thin the orange down to like a glaze consistency and just lightly brush that over the gradient I created to get some dark to light transition. Now I just mix that orange with some of that yellow to brighten it up a bit and just add a little bit of a highlight on the edges. To contrast the orange on the base, I decided to paint the dead Tyranid a bright blue color. I really like this color from Procrow. It's nice. It really covers over the black just super, super well. For its carapace, I decided to use this blue-black color. It's pretty nice as well. I've used it a fair bit in a bunch of different projects. Then I just used some Drakenhof Nightshade and just did some shading there. There was a little bit of cleanup to do, but it looked all right. I mixed some ivory into that skin tone, just to brighten it up a bit, and then just did some highlights on the skin. And then mixing that same ivory into the blue-black I used on the carapace to highlight it as well. Next, I used a dark and bright pink to paint up his tongue. A dark and bright green to paint his eye. There's some bullet casings and rebar on the base, so I just did those up with a dark and bright silver. I almost missed the Tyranid's teeth. <laughs> So I went back in with some ivory and some pure white for the highest highlights. I think it's time to add some static grass and our space marine to the base. So how do you think he turned out? I think he looks okay. I'm pretty happy overall with the conversion. Um, the one wrist where I put the new sword, uh, it's, it is what it is. But overall, I think I did pretty, pretty good. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Like, 
subscribe, all that stuff. I really appreciate you watching. Um, and as always, paint today for a better tomorrow. Thanks.